and everyone and welcome to Light of Revelation Radio. Yes, surely Bishop Anderson in the studio with you this morning. We give Almighty God all the praise, all the glory due to His name. Amen. Glory to God. It's another day we come to worship God in spirit and in truth. As we worship, as we worship, let's get back to the music. Remember, we own no rights to any, we claim no rights to any sound play here. Um, Make no claim to any sound we play on the ear. You're listening to Light of Revelation radio station. Are you believing this morning for something mighty good, huh? Yes, Jehovah God, we trust, sir. Ah. Yes, indeed. Want to say a very pleasant good morning to all the people in the Caribbean. Uh, glory to God. Jamaica, good morning to you. Bahamas, good morning to you. Glory to God. We give Almighty God all the praise, all the glory due to His name. Uh. Yes, we say goodbye to all our pain and sorrow. I want to say a very pleasant good morning to each and every one. It's Light of Revelation Radio. We're streaming on your cell phone. No matter where you are, yes, it's Light of Revelation Radio. We're streaming 24 hours. Say the pastor, good morning to you.
Well, early in the morning, will I rise and give God the praise and glory? Hallelujah. Hey, can I do this one more time? Can I do this one more time? Glory to God. Ah, we're saying goodbye to our pain and sorrow. We're trading in our sorrow, our sickness, our disease for God's best health. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah. Do you want to dance? Do you want to dance? Come on, it's a good day to dance, huh? Let everything that I bread praise ye the Lord, huh? My I trust, uh huh, uh huh, over you, I trust. Absolutely, we claim no song, we claim no rights to any song here. Won't you call a friend and text a friend and tell him Bishop is in the studio this morning and says of God we're going to talk about the art that doesn't know the God of the Bible. You don't want to miss that lesson this morning. The God, the, the heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. Ah, what a message coming up very soon. Ah. Oh yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah. I trust. Oh you know. say so let the redeemed say so i am being set free i've been made free by the power of god hallelujah the saints of god and don't forget you can um you can um think they at facebook yes glory to god subscribe subscribe to my message them on youtube just type in bishop basil anderson and all my message all oh, you did it's for those who have missed um uh, friday night message glory to god hallelujah or oh, you want to get that on um, YouTube, just, um, it's absolutely free, saints of God, it's absolutely free. So Evangelist Karan, good morning to you. It is absolutely free. Why don't you subscribe to my message on Facebook? Um, 
Oh God, what a beautiful message Friday night that we teach. Oh, glory to God. Let me see if I go back and find it. Yeah, the poisonous sin of comparison. The poisonous sin of comparison. Yes, a poisonous sin of comparison. And um, today we are going to deal with the heart. The heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. The heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. The heart. Uh, and, and, and something that you want to hear. Good morning, Brother Vincent. Something you want to hear. The heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. And you might say to me this morning, Well, Bishop, how does the people heart doesn't know God? Well, that's very good. We're going to answer that this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Call a friend, text a friend, do some invites on your phone. Invite some people because they need to hear this because ever since the great fall, ever since the great fall of mankind in the garden, yes, ever since the great fall of mankind in the garden, man's heart has been separated from God. Man art become disconnected from God. Glory to God. Are you with me, saints of God? So you want to hear the message this morning. Stay tuned. Because I, um, I want to take you step by step to show you that um, the people them of the, um, which you call the B.C. B.C. before the appearance of Christ and even after the appearance of Christ Jesus. Their art still didn't know God. Yes, their art did not know God. And this morning we pray, we pray, Almighty God, that each and every one of us, our heart will come to the place where we know God. If you don't know God from the heart, you don't know God. You might be hearing about a God, you might be talking about a God, but your do, heart don't know God. Until the heart know God, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know this God. God must be known from the heart. The heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. That means also if you don't know the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you don't know God. You might hear about God. You might talk about a God. But you have no, you have no relationship with God. It's a dangerous place to be at this morning. And, and this morning we pray God Almighty that our heart will come close to God. Jesus himself testified to such truth. Yes, Jesus testified. So this morning, I'm going to be speaking about the heart that does not know the God of the Bible. Will you call a friend? Will you text a friend? Will you invite a friend? I know we are living in a um, busy time uh, um, where that our, our focus is on greater things, not on the word of God. Let's look and see. Let's look at the reality. I'm just here to teach the word of God. We are so busy. We are so busy, we are so preoccupied with so many things that we don't have time to even learn the word of God or to hear the word of God. The heart that doesn't know the, the God of the Bible is what we are dealing with this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, so watch out. Jesus called, Jesus called the Pharisees them hypocrite because they, were, they worship God for the wrong reason. It's Jesus' statement. Jesus called the Pharisees, the leaders, them with are going to deal with leaders and congregation alike. Because if the leader don't know God, then he can introduce God to you. And we know this is biblical. Glory to God. There's a very important statement Jesus made in John 14. In John 14, um, 8 through 10, when Philip said, show us the Father, show us the Father. Listen to that statement. Read it. Take your time and read it carefully. John 14. John 14, 8 through 10. It said, Philip came to Jesus and said to Jesus, Show us the Father and that will suffice us. That will satisfy me. He was speaking on the behalf. He was speaking on the behalf of the rest of the, the disciples there. He said, show me the Father, and that will suffice me. Jesus said to him, Philip, how long have I been with you for you to say, show me the Father? Don't you know that me and my Father is one? The word I speak, the word I speak, they are not my word, but rather the Father living in me doing the work. Where was, where was God? Where was God um, living? Where did God reside? I, I, I believe I just opened up the entire Bible for you right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, don't you know me and my father is one? And you see, if you're not one with God from the heart, then I don't know how you become one. 
And I'm not trying to be sarcastic or something. I'm just trying to bring you gospel truth. To bring you the truth that you may look and examine yourself. Does God live in your heart? Do you know God from the heart? Do you know God from your heart? Does God dwell in your heart? A lot of people cannot claim that. They can say what they would like to say. But the evidence. If you do um, a diagnostic test. If you do a diagnostic test, it will prove something differently. And I can show you that in the Bible too. God did the diagnosis test and he find that the word of God was not dwelling in the heart of mankind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so we're going to deal with that sense of God. Does your heart know the God of the Bible? Does your heart know the God of the Bible? Is it a God of far off? Is it a God far off that you're worshipping? It is a God afar off that you hear about, or is it a God personally in your heart? So we are going to take you through the process, glory to God, and show you. So, so Jesus called the Pharisee, what you know, which was the leader of that time when he was speaking. And not only did Jesus did it to, um, a lot of prophets did that too. He tell the leaders them that you all are hypocrites. That's why um, you know, we're going to take you through Isaiah did it. Jeremiah did it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, all the way Moses them did it. Can teach that, that, that kind of message. And that message is still relevant today. Like, uh, more than ever you could ever imagine today. Because a lot of people only have a religious feelings about God. Not a personal experience with the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Glory to God. So yes, Jesus called the Pharisees hypocrite because they worship God for the wrong reason. When we follow rules taught, watch this now. When we follow rules taught by religious men, we allow our heart to remain distant from God. When we follow, listen to me carefully, saints of God. When we follow rules, tradition, rules taught by religious men, we allow our hearts to remain a distant from God. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, we see we got to break up this religious belief and, and attitude that people um, have been taught. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, I just want to take my time. I'm in no rush. Absolutely no rush to teach this message. Because we need our people to hear the message. I know some people say that this doesn't concern me. Well, you need to look again. You need to go back and, and think. Because men, well-educated men who, to, who are well-informed by the tradition of men taught they knew God. Taught and taught they were doing the will of God. Your Bible teach this, saints of God. So I'm not bringing up something new. It's what's in the Bible. Men will be killing men and taught they're doing the work of God. Because that's a heart that doesn't know God. And when your heart does not know the word of God, you're in wrong standing. According to Matthew chapter 22 verse 29. Are ye not in error because you know not the word of God, not the power of God? Isn't that what the word of God said? When your heart doesn't know God. A heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. Many people are in that position this morning. But I come to pray deliverance. I come to pray your healing. I come to open up blind eyes to the power of God invested in me. Glory to God that this morning, saints of God, your heart will know the God of the Bible. And Jesus said, and I came according to John chapter 17, verse 1, 2, 3. Oh, glory to God. And I gave them eternal life that they may know the true and living God. The the only true and living God and His Son Jesus Christ. The heart that does not know God of the Bible. Hello somebody. Oh God we pray God grace. Uh, we pray God forgiveness. We pray God mercy. We pray God understand. Open the eyes of the understanding of His people. Glory to God. We don't come with message of condemnation. We don't come with message of sorrow. We come with mercy and truth. Grace and truth uh, to bring you the word of life to dear glory to God that your heart may live in the presence of almighty God there is fullness of joy and that is right and there are pledges forevermore when we allow when we allow rules taught by religious men 
when we accept, when we follow rules taught by religious men, we allow our heart to remain a distant from the true and living God. Now I'm calling you, I'm calling you into the word of God now because only by the word of God you will, um, in your heart, you will know the true and living God. There's no other way you're going to know God because only God alone can reveal himself to you. No man can reveal God to you. You see, we reveal God nature and God will through our action. That's all we can do. But it's the spirit of God. That reveal himself. As the Bible said, no man know the heart of man except the spirit that is in a man's heart. That according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 through 14. Glory to God. Does your, does your heart know the God of the Bible? Does your heart believe in the God of the Bible? Does your heart understand the God of the Bible? Moving along, moving along. We have a lot of things to cover this morning. Glory to God. Does your heart know the God of the Bible, saints of God? Oh, glory to God. Over 2,000 years, over 2,000 years plus, Jesus Christ testified to the truth that these people honor me with their lips, but their heart was a distant from them. That was over 2,000 years. But wait a minute. But let me tell you something. It didn't start 2,000 years ago. You can go back and do the, the calculation. The, uh, it's just mathematics. Do the, do the math. Do the math. Ever since the fall, the great fall of Adam, man's heart becomes separated. Man's heart becomes distant from Almighty God. What do you think Jesus came here back into the earth to do? To reconcile. To reconcile the heart of man with him. Because the, the mind and the heart was in hostility with God. The carnal mind cannot submit to God. It does not know God. It will not um, um, submit to the things of God. It's in hostility with God. Saint of God, hallelujah this morning. Glory to God. We bless God this morning. Yes, Jesus testified to such truth. He said, um, these people, they honor me. And um, I believe last year, last year I did a powerful teaching on this uh, honorable lip service. Now you can write that down for me, please. An honorable lip service. And then you know what is an honorable lip service, what it's all about. It's a, it, 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 it spear words coming from the mouth, but there's no heart. There's no, there's no connection. There's no truth. There's no God in that heart. It's just an honorable. We talk, but no evidence showed up. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? God is going to search your heart for the evidence. When the children of Israel came out of bondage, they went into the wilderness for 40 years. And they all died. Yes, they all died. Unfortunately, they died. Because what? They died. They didn't go to the promised land. They didn't know God from the heart. Bible said that God tests them. You'll find this in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 1 through about 5. And God tested them for 40 years to see if the word of God was living in them. And he could not find the word of God living in his chosen people. I'm talking about God's chosen people did not know God by knowledge. Just like today, many people don't know God by knowledge, by the word of God. They, they think of an imaginary God, a God that is afar off, a God is not close to them. That's why the heart is sick. The um, hope that death makes the heart sick. And the people then become very sick in their heart. Somebody say, heal my heart, O God. Heal me, O God, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Wickedness have occupied. Yes, wickedness have occupied the hearts of men. Oh, saints of God, this morning I said wickedness have occupied the hearts of men. Evil 
thoughts have occupied the hearts of men. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But this morning, I pray salvation. I pray speedily you will embrace God's word. We are too busy whereby we do not hear God. We don't meditate upon God's word as we are to. We don't love him as much as we are to. Glory to God. But this morning, I pray God Almighty that God will bring light to your heart. Oh, because the heart, light of the shine out of the heart, the glory of God. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 7 verse 5 through 8, Mark chapter 7, 5 through 8, Mark chapter 7, glory to God, St. Mark chapter 7, hallelujah. Mark chapter 7, saint of God, let's look at it, Jesus testified to such truth. That um, these people were only honoring God with their lips, but their heart was far from God. From Mark chapter 7, verse 5 through 8. And the word of God read thus. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciple them live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their mind? Glory to God. Mm-hmm. So what is now? So he said, with unclean hands. They're talking about the hands. Okay. Is it? Uh, is there profit in it for you to wash your hands before you eat? Yes. But it, it, it have nothing to do with your thoughts. Your heart, out of your abundance of your heart, come evil thoughts. So if you wash your hands and evil still in the thoughts, and guess what? It make your it make your life no good. It make your life unclean. Glory to God. See, evil thoughts is what make man's heart unclean. In the wrong standing with God. Glory to God. Evil knowledge that you believe in your heart. So verse 6, Jesus replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, hypocrite, as it is written. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teaching are but rules taught by men. I want you to see what was the problem. Jesus clearly identified the problem. He said, these people honor me in vain. They are vain worshippers today, saints of God. They are worshipping God, not in spirit and in truth. They are worshipping an imaginary God. The true God does not live, does not take up residence in their heart. The word of God does not dwell in them. It's only rules taught by religious men. And we are to overcome. We are to overcome in our hearts. We must be set free in our hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 8 said, watch now. You, you have let go of the command of God and holding on to tradition of men. Rules taught by men. Do you see the problem? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus is dealing with this problem. And, and, and why did Jesus deal with this problem? Because it is important. It is important for him to deal with this issue because this is where it matters of the heart. See, we, 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 we look good on the outside, but inside are dead men's bone. Nothing of God find in the heart. The diagnostic report show that the word of God, the spirit of God, was not in the heart of men. Then if, if, if God is not in the heart, then you have to ask yourself, then who is or what is in the heart of men? Glory to God. So what is now? The prophet Isaiah. This now was written in the book of Isaiah. But not only in the book of Isaiah, but this where Jesus is quoting to. I want us to just point this out to you. What Jesus was quoting is Isaiah 29 and 13. See, so Jesus knew. So it wasn't just 2,000 years ago. This problem exists. You got to take it back and go back to the fall of men. The great fall of men. Ever since man separated in the garden from the heart. Man art does not know God, the God of the Bible. Men, men do things outwardly. His heart have no connection. You have to be internally connected to Almighty God. Saints of God, this is how it works. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
You have to be internally connected. This is why Christ came to give us the spirit. And if any man does not have the spirit of God, is none of his. That's what the Bible tells you. Because God and the word is one. Christ and the word is one. Oh, glory to God. He made all things for himself. And through him all things were made. We need to understand that, saints of God. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Let's back up to Isaiah so you can see the written word of God that is not just 2,000 years ago they had that pro problem. But guess what? That problem was not resolved. Christ came and he dealt with the issue and he showed them, said, wait, this is what the problem is and now we can resolve it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But man's heart is still far from God. Isaiah 29 and verse 13. Glory to God. So we, 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 we are going to identify that the problem was not only just 2,000 years ago. And so Jesus dealt with the problem because so it was in the days of the prophet. So it was in the days of Jesus Christ. So it still is today. Because many of us, we just want to go to church or, or we just want to do what we feel like. I say, God, you take that. And God said, no, 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 you're going to give me what I require. You see, the, um, I believe it's um, Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. Yes, yeah, Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. But let me tell you a truth about that. God will give you the desire of your heart. But guess what? But God will also... But God will also teach you what to desire. Because this is a God going to teach you what you're going to desire. You see, because many people believe and they hear the statement. Yes, many people hear the statement, um, that's, that, that quote. So many people hear that quote. Oh, if you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desire of your heart. That is partially true. But God teach your heart what to desire the holy spirit is who teach our heart what to desire hello somebody see so 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 when somebody is telling you oh god yeah just delight in the law man to take pleasure it's good you take pleasure in the law because when you start to take pleasure god start to transform the heart he start to change your heart and start to show the heart what is to desire if you notice things that you used to so passionate about when you were a sinner you have not those passion no more because god is slowly weaning you away from those pleasure so you can uh, 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 have more focus upon him and what he want to do for you this is biblical truth. So Isaiah, Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 29 and 13, the prophet have the same problem. So, so Jesus pick it up. So Isaiah have that problem. Jeremiah have that problem. All through the Bible, not just them alone. We, we were, this is why we are encouraging you to read your Bible and see what was the problem. It was issue of the heart. The heart was far from God. Truth has vanished. Truth has vanished from the heart of man. Since we need to understand this. The truth has vanished from the heart of man. Everybody going around telling lies to each other. That's what your Bible says. I'm going to show you in Jeremiah too. The heart is deceitful above everything. Who can understand that? So we're going to deal with it. So let's Isaiah chapter 29 and 13. Come on. So you stay with me here now. Watch this now. The word of God said, verse 13. <coughs> uh, for the, oh, let me give us something. Uh, right, should I start from... Um, let me start from verse 11. Let, 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 I, I, I know Pastor Vincent put up uh, 13, but let me start from verse 11. For this old vision is nothing but words sealed up in a scroll. That's Isaiah 29, verse 11. We're reading from verse 11. Yeah? The word of God seal up in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read, they will say to him, read this for me, please. He will answer, I can't. It is sealed. Verse 12. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot, who cannot read and say, Read this, please. He will answer, I don't know how to read. Verse 13. 
the Lord said, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me. They worship. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Not by the Holy Spirit. You can't open up a sealed thing. Jesus Christ is the one who opened up the seal. Jesus Christ is the one who, who, who he, he, if you notice, he didn't only just cleanse your heart. He take out the heart of stone and replace it according to the promise. I will give you a new heart. So, sins of God, then if you have received a new heart, then how come you're still doing the same old foolish things? How come you still believe in the same old foolish things? Because the heart that God gave you is a heart like his. One songwriter said, give me a heart like that. So then if we claim that we have a heart like God, why are we doing the foolishness that we do? Why are we not finding success? Why are we, our lives are not being transformed or changed? If God has given you a new heart, which is the promise, the covenant promise of God. Because the, the whole heart that was in man was totally corrupt. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So, so he said, it's made up only of rules taught by men. That's what most people was doing, worshiping what men tell them to do. Not what the word of God tell them to do. Not what the word of God revealed to them to do. They were just rules taught by men. Today is the same thing. Today, yeah, many leaders are giving people a lot of rules. The only rules we have for you is the Bible. Just get to the word of God. Give me the word of God. Forget about everything else. Because God's word stands forevermore. God's word cannot return void. God's word is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I told you what the word yesterday means. It means recent time. You look up the Bible dictionary of the word yesterday. It means recent time. God's word will still have its power and its strength. Every day you wake up, the word of God will meet you. The word of God will greet you. The word of God will bless you. The word of God will transform you. It changes your attitude. It changes your mentality. It changes your perspective. It changes your attitude towards people and even God. I'm talking about when you follow Rules taught by men, you're going to take your heart away from God. The distant practice of the heart of men from God. That's all you're going to do. And so I want you to hear what happened then. When it's rules taught by men, it's taking your heart away from God. Because it's only rules taught by men. So you're not going to judge things from the outward appearance. You're not going to look at things. You want to know, wait a minute, give me the art of the matter here. Because we want to fix it. We're in 2019. And then we're not going back in Egypt. You see, and when your heart is empty of the word of God, it will take you back to Egypt. This is why we encourage you to read the word of God. Study the word of God with us daily. Right here at Light of Revelation Radio. Because we also, after, we're going to replay this message this evening or tomorrow whenever. So you can take time to meditate upon the word of God. We're talking about a changed life. The heart must come to know God. You see, many people only try to make you believe that to know God is by the material things you possess. And that is not the truth. You, the greatest possession you, are, you and I are to have is the Spirit of God in our heart. The greatest possession. Does your heart possess the Word of God? Does your heart know the God of the Bible? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. A distant practice of the heart of men from God. Has been going on from, from ever since the great fall of Adam. Do you see what Christ came into the world to do? To correct this. Christ came to resolve. And all these problems. All these problems that as was and, and is. God fixed them through Christ Jesus. It had been taken care of. 
But men still hold on to the old wife tales. The old fairy tales that they come to accept and believe. And won't let go. You have to read this Bible for yourself. You have to have a re personal relationship with God for yourself, saints of God. Hallelujah. All throughout the Bible, it becomes issue and matters of the heart. All throughout the Bible. So it doesn't matter how much we read. If our heart is not being convicted of the truth, then nothing change about us. All throughout the Bible, it becomes issue and matters of the heart. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 through 11 and show you. I'm going to show you. Take you through, 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 through the entire Bible because we are not on no rush to teach it because this is where the problem is at. You could hear as much as you want. If the word of God is not planted in your heart, then saints of God, we have serious problem. We absolutely have serious problem. Hmm? God's word must be what? The most important things. The most important focus of our heart. The word of God must be the most important focus of our heart. Glory to God. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 through 11. Let's go to Jeremiah. Go over to the book of Jeremiah. Just taking it to you step by step. So Jeremiah chapter 17. And let me show you saints of God. Mm -hmm. We strongly suggest that you read um, the entire um chapter of Jeremiah chapter 17 but just because of time just because of time because we don't want the video to be too long or the message to be too long so I strongly suggest that you read the entire um, thing of Jeremiah chapter 17 but I'm going to pick it up from verse 9 very important it's very important glory to God watch this now verse 9 said the heart is deceitful above all things and be uncured. I want you to meditate upon that. This is what God is talking about his children. He's not talking about a sinner man. Even though it affects them too. But guess what? God is speaking to his people, Israel. His chosen people. Their heart was far from, from God. We're talking about Christian believers. Our, our, our followers of God here. The heart. Look at what he said. It said that the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord, search the heart. In other word, I am the Lord. I'm the heart searcher. I, I examine the heart of men. Hello, somebody. Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to search your heart? We sing that song, um, you know, growing up, we heard that song saying, Search me, O God, and know my heart today. See if there's any wicked ways in me. Oh, wow. See if. You, you, you know, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Search me, O God. Yes, you sing it. I know my thoughts today. Mm -hmm. And you ask for cleansing. You ask for cleansing. See if there be any wicked ways in me. Cleanse me, O Savior. I pray. Know my heart, I pray. It's not a matter if God knows your heart. God knows your heart. The question is, do you know your heart? Do you know what is in your heart? Do you know what is in your heart? Do you know what is in your heart? Does the word of God live in your heart? Does the truth live in your heart? Or is it lies? Is it deceitfulness? Is it wickedness? Huh? Is it deception? Is it far from God? Hmm? And I believe that he who begun a good work in you according to Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. For this I am confident, being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in me. Huh? So if God promised to give you a new heart, you have to work upon that heart. He have to do a spiritual surgery upon your heart. It requires, it is a require, it is a must. You have to go through a spiritual surgery for God to take out the whole heart and to put in a new heart in you. You have to go through a spiritual transformation. 
a heart transplant. Give me a heart like thine. Many of us are not willing to go through the process. Yes, many are not willing to go through this process for God to change your heart. Change me, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God. You cried out, but you're not willing to go through the process. So, so it, 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 it said, For the Lord search the heart and examine the mind. Oh, oh, wait a minute. God search the heart and examine the mind. Do you see that? God is examining your intellect to see if the word, if does the word live in you, just like I say in Deuteronomy chapter 8, ver verse 1 through 5. You notice that they feel the test. You see the word examine? It's a test. God is testing man's heart daily. God is searching man's heart daily. And he's showing you the result. It's right in front of you. The result. You want to know if God's searching your heart? There you go. Read the Bible. That's a relationship with God. See, see if your action line up with your word. Does what you say line up with God's word? Because Brother Vincent tell you yesterday that God's word line up with God's action and God's action line up with God's word. And so likewise, you and I, as a believer of the faith, glory to God, hallelujah, we need to make sure that our word line up with our action according to the written word of God. Not according to what we feel, not according to what we think, not according to what we were taught. We have to test and prove for ourselves. See if my heart is in line with the word of God. If my action, if my thought is in line with the word of God. And the reason why I want to read verse 11, because the Bible says something here, verse 11 is very powerful. We, uh, the children of Israel became, they, they, they became like a partridge trying to hatch egg that never laid. Oh, I remember when I first started out and I see this, I'm like, oh my God, how foolish was I? And in some ways I'm still are. I'm still as foolish. Yes, in some ways I am still fooling because guess what? This is why it, it required that I submit my all in all to God Almighty for God to get out the foolishness that was what? Planted in me. For God to spiritually surgery, to change, to transform, to put a new heart in me, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Yes, saints of God, it takes time. We have to go through the process. David had to go through that process. And David was also known to be a man after God's own heart. But David had to cry out in agony, in pain. When David come to realize that God knows, God, God searched the heart and know what is in the heart of man. So, so David had to cry out in repentance, in agony, in pain. And he said, create in me, God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me because thou desirest truth in the inward part of men. That's the psalmist David, Psalm 51. Glory to God. See, if God never revealed, if God never revealed the condition of David, oh, David would have been still doing a lot of evil and think, and think he could have get away with it. But God does not justify our evil. God does not justify our wrongdoing. God want to cleanse you. God want to deliver you. God want to set you free from the evil that is in your heart. But look at verse 11. Verse 11 said now, Like a partridge that hatches egg, it did not lay. You're trying to get results from the things of God when you don't know the word of God, when you don't have the word of God, when you don't practice the word of God. How, what result are you looking for? How are you planning to become like God when your heart is far from him? Then you're going to understand the saying, love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. With all thy soul and with all thy mind. That is not from the New Testament. This is from the Old Testament. This is what God was commanding the people to, to know him from the heart. Does your heart know God? The God of the Bible. The God of the living word. The holy word. Does your heart know the holy word of God? Hello somebody. Like a partridge trying to hatch a git never lay. Can you imagine? 
Can you imagine a false seat and an alligator egg? Just imagine that. What a sight. What a sight when that thing hatch. What? This don't look like. Uh -uh. Hello? <laughs> Mm? That's why many of us, our hearts are in such agony and pain because our heart does not know the God of the Bible. And even though the reality is right in front of you and showing you, wait a minute, this is not of God. You have to ask yourself, then what else? I do not understand, I know. You get to ask yourself that question. Glory to God. Like a partridge trying to hatch egg, it never lay. Are you trying to, uh, many of us trying to become spiritual without the Spirit of God? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's what it means. Are you trying to become spiritual without the Spirit of God? The body without the Spirit is no good, it's dead. You have to come God's way. You can't go how you feel or by tradition or men taught. You have to go by what is written. This is why Jesus, even when he was tempted... After 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights of um, fasting, the temper came to test him. Boy, did his heart win the match. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Are you living by the word that proceeded out of God's mouth? And if you're not, then I encourage you to start now. Now is the day of salvation. Now is a new beginning. Now is 2019. Will you get your heart right with God? Because the Bible tells you the most corrupt place of a man is his heart. But you, do, you, you, you see, the, the primary focus of a man's heart is not the things of God. All throughout the Bible, ever since the fall of man, the primary focus... Of man art was not the things of God. It was not the word of God. It was their emotion, what they feel, they do what they want to do. And as, as it were tells that God allowed them to get away with all that thing. But in this day, God is holding you accountable to know the word of God. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Where is God? You ask many people, where is God? They tell us, they start to look up in the sky. But what about the God of the heart? What about the God that seated upon the throne of your heart? Saints of God, I'm calling out to you this morning. Glory be to God. What about the God that seated upon the throne of your heart? When God's word become primary focus, when God's word become the primary focus of our heart, it change our understanding. It change our belief. It change, it change, change wrong belief to right. Oh, glory to God. It change art from powerless to powerful. Look at Saul's life on Damascus Road. His heart have to be changed. You think it's just his ways changed? Because many of us think that our ways just changed. No, your heart have to be first changed. And if your heart is not changed, your ways will never change. Saints of God, I'm appealing to you. America and around the world, I'm appealing to you. You must have to have a change of heart. Repent of your evil heart. That's the first order of business. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. You have to repent of your heart. Don't forget the message I just teach a couple weeks ago. You must surrender your carnal mind. You have to put away your carnal mind. It's not going nowhere until you decide to put it away. So it's like the partridge you're trying to hatch egg it never lay. You're trying to get results in something God never promised you. You're trying to find success in something God never promised you. And what God promised you, you're ignoring it. God's word must become the primary focus of our heart. Nothing else. Nothing else, saints of God. This is the gospel truth. And if you notice in today's society, God's word is not our primary focus. Trouble and worries 
and the cares of this world become the primary focus. It occupies space it have no business occupy. Oh, but we bring back our hearts to God Almighty that he will say, know me from the heart. God wants you and I to know him from our heart. Do you want your heart to be changed from powerless to powerful? A choice is yours. You become more powerful, more confident in the things of God when you know God from the heart. Yes, you become more powerful, not powerless. When you don't know the word of God from your heart, you are powerless. And I'm sorry I have to tell you the truth. Hmm? I'm not apologizing for it. But, uh, you know, God is using me to tell you this truth. God is speaking to me for you to consider your ways. You cannot change your life until you change the condition of your heart. You cannot. I don't care how much you pretend right now. And you may do something good. You buck up into doing something good right now. But the truth still remains the same. Is your heart. Do you have a change of heart? And I'm not just talking about I just changed my mind. Have you gone through the process? Of God creating in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Because that's the only way you're going to have to go. There's no other way. David have to learn this the hard way. And David repent in Psalm 51. David get caught. And God loved David so much. And if you notice, where did God pour his love? In our heart. He wrote his love in hearts. God wrote his love in heart who believe in him, who trust in him, who have faith in him. He wrote his love in our heart. His throne is in the heart of men who believe in him, saints of God. Hallelujah. Hmm? He wrote his love in hearts today. Does your heart in love with God? Does your heart in love with God? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So, so what is now? Yes, when our hearts become, when the Word of God become the primary focus, guess what? Things start to change. But as long as the Word of God is not the primary focus of our heart, you have a whole lot of confusion going on. Think about it. Think about it. Now you understand Joshua 1 and 8. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall well meditate upon it well day and night to observe to do all that is written in it. Then you shall be prosperous and have good success. See, so, so our focus, our primarily focus is supposed to be on the word of God in your heart, in your mind, in your thoughts. But that's not what's in it. See, that's why many of us on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning we become so religiously spooky. You're not on a solid foundation, saints of God. You build on solid foundation. Whosoever hear these words of mine and believe them, receive them, receive and put them into practice, I'll show the world what he's like. That's what your Bible tells you in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Either you're building on a wise foundation or you're building on a foolish foundation. And all of us, include me, at one point or another, had built our life the wrong way. Yes, we build our life the wrong way. And so we must come to the place, saints of God. We must come to the place where we build our hearts upon the word of God on Christ on Christ's teaching on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is quick sinking sand everything else is going to fade away you must build your life upon the eternal word of God the eternal word of God should always be and must be the primarily focus of your heart the main focus you got to let the word of God become the main focus of your heart. The Bible declare. The Bible do declare that it is 
with the heart. Watch this now. The Bible declares it is with the heart men believe. Did you hear that? It is with the heart men believe. This is what the Bible declares. It is with the heart men believe. And are justified. Are you with me? It, it is with the heart men believe and are justified. We are going to go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and we're going to spend some time in the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 verse 6 through 15. We're going to spend a lot of time and we're even going to close off with Romans. And we are going to continue this series. The heart that doesn't know the God of the Bible. Romans chapter 10 and verse um, glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus Romans chapter 10 and as we um, let me just put that up dear saints of God hallelujah because I, 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 when we come to understand when we come to understand um, the things of God Mm-hmm. When we when we come to understand um, Romans, let me just write this the same. Romans chapter ten. Glory to God, Hallelujah. Um, verse six to fifteen. I'm gonna spend some time there. Yes, I'm going to spend some time right here. Romans chapter 10. And I want you to read with me, saints of God. Get your Bible. Get your Bible and read with me. Read with me because it's going to show you. Say, it is with the heart you believe. So if your place of belief is weak, then guess what? Your faith is weak also. If your place of belief is darkened, then your, 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 um, your faith is darkened. Because it is with the heart man believe and are justified, being made free, with your heart. See, if the heart is made right, if the heart is made right with God, then you're going to see freedom. Glory to God. And I pray that the life you're living now, it is not you live anymore. You see, when the heart becomes right with God, the life you live, is not no longer you live it. I, I, and I just want to say this in, in great encouragement to each and every one who, who are under the sound of God. God wants to live his life in you. Now, you know, yes, God desire to live his life in you. That's what this is all about. It's not your life, it's his life. See, that's where the problem is. We want to live our life. You see, Paul catch a vision of this in um, Galatians chapter 2, I think verse either 19 through 21 there. He said, the life I now live, it is not I who live, but Christ living in me. This is when the change fully take place. Merge, oh glory to God. When the change fully merge, it is not I, God. I want to say to those who are on Facebook, for those who are on the World Wide Web, however you're listening or watching, Light of Revelation Radio. God want to live his life through you, through your body. Prepare my body. He prepare your body so he can live his life through you. I hope you catch a revelation of that. Your body is a temple of the living God. And God want to live his life through you. Will you allow him today? Will you allow him today? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to live his life in you or through you? Will you? Romans chapter 10. Let's do some reading. Glory to God. Romans chapter 10. Because as I said, we are going to um, continue this teaching. We don't want it to be too long. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because we are going to do a series upon the heart. Amen. The heart man believe. Romans chapter 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. From verse 6. And the word of God said, But the righteous that is by faith say, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into the heaven? That is to what? Bring Christ down. You don't have to go nowhere to bring Christ down. The just shall live by faith. The righteous man live by the word of God, the spirit of God. When you talk about the word, it's talking about the spirit. The word and the spirit, they are one. 
the word and the spirit they are one in your heart glory to God oh God I see hearts coming better glory to God hearts are made alive right now oh glory to God let me just stay, praise God right there upon this anointing that is upon this message right now heart is made alive heart is filled with um with hope oh god and the reality and the manifestation of the holy spirit right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth heart is being made new hearts are united with god right now hearts around the world around the world glory to god god is saying hearts are uniting around the world right now this message when you hear this message and share this message with other people immediately hearts are going to unite with god men are coming into a greater understanding of the things of god hallelujah oh glory to god because heart are reconciling with god hearts are coming home come on home come on home i'm calling you to come Come on home, oh glory to God. Come on home to the truth. Um, oh glory to God. Verse 7 said, uh, Who will um, descend into the deep? Huh? Who will descend in the deep? That is to bring Christ up. God said you don't have to go into the deep uh, of the water. You don't have to go up in the sky to look for God. Oh my God. Verse 8. But what does, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. And it is in your heart. Come on, get the word in your heart and get it in your mouth. When you get the word of God in your heart, when you get the word of God in your mouth, God, the Holy Spirit, will show up in the heart. It will make known to the heart of men. God want to reveal himself. I stop by to tell you God want to reveal himself in your heart. God want to live his life in you. That it is the Holy Spirit want to manifest uh, oh God in your heart uh, uh, and into your mouth through the word, the spirit and the word uh, oh my God, out of your belly shall flow streams of living water, we give God the praise, we give God the glory saints of God, because out of your innermost being, I see God glory is revealing uh, in your innermost being, I see God goodness, uh, I see God pour his love in your heart, uh, oh glory to God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believe on him should not perish uh, but have life everlasting uh, oh glory to God hallelujah we worship him uh, we praise his name this morning saints of God moving along moving along <clears throat> The word is near you, it's in your heart, it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is what? The word of faith. We are proclaiming, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. If you confess it with your mouth and believe with your heart. Heart, oh God, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Oh, glory to God. The heart is confessing Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, glory to God. You see, there's a deposit of the be in your heart, the deposit of the word of God, the deposit of the Holy Spirit of the be in your heart. Uh, as Paul rightly say in Galatians chapter 1 uh, and verse 11, oh, glory to God, when God find it fit to deposit his spirit of his son Jesus Christ in him that I may preach him that I may proclaim him that I may show him to the world come on saints of God Jesus Christ is the light of this dark world and he's deposit himself he's making himself ready for you who are prepared to receive him for as many as receive him to them he gave the power to become the sons of God somebody ought to give God a praise here today because we have a chance change of heart. We have a change of spirit because God make all things new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I said old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Tell somebody, make me over. It is a spiritual makeover. God is saying, you got to know me from the heart. You got to live from this truth of your heart. The spirit of truth must be in your heart. The spirit of truth, the world does not know him. Him. Oh, glory to God, because you know him, because he's in your heart. Somebody, if you have God in your heart, you are to give God all the praise. You are to give God all the glory. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. We praise God this morning for the true saints of God. It's a resurrection day, a new day dawning, and the glory 
is shining through our hearts. The truth of God's word. So, so watch this now. Verse 10. Look at verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Do you see that? We're still in the book of Romans chapter 10. It is with the heart you believe. Come on. You have to be an hardcore heart believer. A heart. The connection of the heart. Heart to heart. The relationship you must have with God is a heart to heart relationship. It is with the heart men believe and are justified. Set free, made free, blessed, empowered, equipped. You name it all. It is with the heart. It must first manifest in the heart. That's why it talks about the seed. It talks about the seed that fall upon the good soil of the heart of men. Is the word of God in your heart? Do you know God from the heart? All throughout Israel days and come on up to Jesus up till this day, many people does not know God from the heart. Oh, I know God is here, there, everywhere. Absolutely. But what about him being in your heart? He take up residency. He resides. Unless the word of God dwell in you richly, you cannot produce result. And the word, John 6, 63, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Come on, will you open up your heart? Will you open up your heart? And be justified today, be made free today by this presence of Almighty God, will you? Moving on, verse 10. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Verse 11. You are blessed by him, O God. Mm -hmm. Richly blessed all who, who on him, call on him. Right? Watch now, verse 13. For everyone who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 14. Now, this is where verse 14 is going to get you now. How then can they call on the one whom they have not heard? Look at this. How can they call upon the one whom they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? Problem, saints of God. There's a problem. If you haven't heard God from the heart, you have a problem. You can't hear God from your, from, 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 from your mind because remember, the mind has to be what? Transformed. You hear God from your heart. You hear God. It is by the heart we are saved. It is by the heart man are saved. You are blessed. And we confess God from the heart. We don't confess God from just the lips. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. This is what God is calling you and I to. Glory to God. So how can they, how can they have believe in? Huh? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? So you, how do you hear God? See, all these things are, you don't hear God from your carnal mind. The carnal mind cannot hear God. It's enmity. It's as that. You hear God from the heart. The rebirth. When God Rebirth the soul of man. He rebirth the soul of man, the heart of man, the place where he promised, as he promised in Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to sprinkle water upon you and I'm going to cause you to walk in my word. That's the God you and I serve. That is the God you and I serve when you can hear God from the heart. If you're not hearing God from the heart, then how do you believe? Because it is with the heart. First believe. So watch this now. Um, you know, I, my grandmother taught me something. My grandmother taught me something. Um, and she said that, um, um, she said to me, Son, is not the same day leaf fall into the water, is soak and go to the bottom. It takes time. You see, all these things that you've been going through, God's been working through you so the word of God can get to the good soil of your heart. So you can hear him from your heart. You can know him from your heart. You understand him from the heart. Oh God, not from the worldly perspective. Are you with me, saints of God? Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, that's what we need to come to understand. It is with the heart we come to know God. You hear God from your heart. Not from your carnal way of thinking, unless your mind is being transferred. Because when the mind and the heart unite together, oh glory to God, history is made. Mm. 
Ah, it is with the heart you know God and make confession to him. But how can they hear whom they have not believed in? If you don't believe from the heart, then guess what? It's just a plain waste of time. You have to believe God from the heart. That's what you, I just read, Romans chapter 10. We're not moving from Romans chapter 10, and we're reading from um, verse 6 through 15, and we're at verse, let me read verse 14 again. Let's read verse 14 once again, saints of God. Look at verse 14. How then can they call on the one, on the one they have not believed? If you don't believe God from the heart, we have problems. A serious problem because it is with the heart I want to get this to you it is said it it is with my heart I believe <laughs> in my innermost being I believe see that's why David was called a man after God's own heart and God is creating new art in people right now all around the world those who are hungry for the truth the spirit of truth that's where Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. The spirit of faith. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the spirit of faith will take possession of your, take possession of the throne of your heart right now. That you'll become royal priesthood. Because if the heart is not right, the outcome is wrong. If your heart is not right with God, the outcome is wrong. You don't want to be like that partridge trying to hatch egg it never lay. Don't look for things God never promised you. Look for the promise of God. What God want to do in you. Know God's requirement. God's requirement that he want to give you a new heart and renew a right spirit in you. That's transformation. And you can't do this for yourself. Only God alone can do this for your saints of God. Only God alone can do that. And you, what you do is to submit to the process and live. Let's move on now. Let me go on. So it said now, who they are not believing and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? It's hard for you to trust somebody you never hear. It's difficult. It's not easy trusting somebody you never heard. It's difficult, very hard. Hmm? And how can they hear? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? And you know, we did that message. Me and Brother Vincent did that message, sent and went. Last year we did that message. We have to go find those messages and, 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 and post them up for you so you hear. You have to be sent. And when you're sent, you're carrying, you're carrying the message, you're carrying the spirit, you become, you're, which is called born, B-O-R-N-E, not born, born, to carry, means to carry. I'm a carrier of the spirit, the message, and the life of the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God in my heart. Oh, glory to God. Are you with me? You're carrying. I said, you must become a carrier of the spirit. The word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Where is it in the heart? And if the word of God is not in your heart, my friend, I encourage you today that this is the day you are to be born again. Let God make you over. It's a new beginning. It's a new start in Christ Jesus. Oh, come on. You got to hear God from the heart. You see what happened that most of us not hearing God uh, from the heart. We're hearing the voice of other people. Oh, glory to God. But when you are a messenger when you are a child of God you're born the spirit of almighty God you become the carrier Jesus make it known to John um, to Philip he said the word I carry the word I speak is not me but it is the father living in me who is doing the work uh, are you ready for your heart uh, as a heart prepared to meet God uh, as a heart prepared to receive God uh, the spirit of the living God uh, is upon this message and it's telling you, come on, you got to get your heart right. Let me create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you. You can't do this for yourself. It's a gift of God. And we are well pleased when God do his work in us. Somebody say, work on me and work through me, God. Ah, we need to pray those prayers. Holy Spirit of God, I know you've been working on me. And I know you're working through me. Oh my God, that's why I love Philippians 1 and 6. 
us are being confident of this that he who began a good work in me is able to bring it to completion will you allow God to bring his work to completion will you allow the Holy Spirit to work upon the table of thine heart oh glory to God hallelujah out of the abundance of your heart your life will manifest God glory and God goodness God is waiting to reveal himself in you and through you oh glory to God Hallelujah. It is a clean hands and a pure in heart. How does my heart get pure and I don't know the word of God? How do I become righteous and I don't have the spirit of God, not the word of God? Come on, I'm calling the altar is open. God is a come to the cross. Come to the altar. I got good things I want to upload in you right now. Glory to God. I'm going to give you, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. How can they preach unless they was saying what message are men preaching if it's that from the word of God uh, you don't want to hear it uh, I want to hear the word of the living God give me the teaching of almighty God uh, give me the love of almighty God give me the joy of almighty God let my heart rejoice in the things of God uh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God we worship God in spirit and in truth these are the kind of people God is seeking for when the heart is made right with God. First Samuel, first Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. It said that the Lord does not look at the things people look at. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance. But your God, but my God, mm, mm, mm. if he's your God, Lord have mercy. Look at the heart where God is looking. Where God, so how come God is looking at the heart and you look it bypass it? How God is looking at the heart, sins of God and you bypass it where God is looking and working. If you bypass where God is working and looking at, you miss God. That's why many people heart doesn't know the God of the Bible, what God wanted to do. But God's word reveal what God wanted to do. And if you don't know the word of God, then you don't know what God wants to do. Because God's word tells you what God's going to do. Oh, glory to God. See, that's why many people are putting such a, a demand upon God. But guess what? They fail to recognize God's demand, what God wants to do. Oh, God. You see, yes, you may take pleasure in the things of God, but God... Tells your heart what to take pleasure in. Mm -mm -mm. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Somebody said, look at my heart, God. Look at my heart. Don't just say, oh God, you know my heart. Huh? No, 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 no. No, 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 let him begin his work in the heart because the work must begin in the heart. You must hear God from the heart. You must know God from the heart. You must believe God from the heart because whosoever come to him must first believe that he exists and he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 6. Are you believing God from the heart? Are you? Are you believing God from the heart? Well, let me close with this scripture. Let me show you where God is doing and where God is working. It's in your Bible. We're going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. Where God is working. Where God is searching. And I pray that this message will bring you deliverance right now. As you apply your heart. You see, he calls for the heart. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Huh? That's what he called it. For. That's he said. That's where I'm working. That's where I'm working. But many of us, we, it's only a lip service. No, we have to go through the processes of God. You have to go through the spiritual uh, surgery, where God replace the art of soul. That's why many of us can't respond to God because our heart is still the the, the stony ground. God said, No, I have to move it. I have to remove it and put in you the right heart and the right spirit and cause you to walk in my word. So chronicle, watch this now, chronicle 
Second Chronicle chapter 16 and verse 9. Look at what it said. Um, um, Brother Vincent put up Second Chronicle 18 and 29. I don't know what that is, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm at six, Second Chronicle chapter 16 and verse 9. Look where God is at. Um, I might have to look at what Brother Vincent put up there. Oh, glory to God. All right, but Second Chronicle chapter 16 and verse 9 said, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to straighten those out, to straighten those art who whose art to straighten those whose art are fully committed to him now would you meditate upon that will you meditate upon that now what god is doing god eyes are going throughout the earth hmm? to strengthen those whose heart are fully committed to him God wanted a fully committed art. Half heartedness can work. Half heartedness cannot work, saints of God. And I pray that this message challenge you, bless you, open up your eyes. Half hearted, half heartedness can't find God, can't come to see God. You have to come to God. Because God's eyes are going through the earth to this very day to see who's art, to strengthen, to bless, to strengthen. Listen, God's eyes are looking. Mm, I want to strengthen somebody's art who is fully committed to me. If you're not committed to God from the heart, today I encourage you, why not make that commitment? I commit my heart to you, God. I commit my life to you. Make me over. Created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. I need it, God. I need it. Make me new from the inside. Make me new from the inside. The heart. The heart that does not know God. The God of the Bible. I pray for you today. As you invite God to come into your heart. Come in. Come in today. Come in, I pray. Cleanse your heart. Let the spirit of the living God cleanse you, deliver you, set you free. I pray this upon your life. You're listening to Light of Revelation Radio. We're streaming 24 hours. Please visit our website. Please visit our website, lightofrevelationradio.com, and be blessed. Start to enjoy some of the music and some of the message that we're going to replay even through the course of this day. This is Bishop Anderson saying we love you. Be good to yourself and be good to God. And let God be good to you. God has already been good to you. Will you just embrace God? Because the word I speak, their spirit and their life. And God wants to make your heart over. Change your heart. Change it. Change it. Somebody said, change my heart, heart. God will do it for you. For those who are on Facebook, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. Thank you. We thank you. We bless God. And I pray that this message been a blessing. The heart must come to know God. And if you, and that's what um, 2016 is all about. That your heart come into the right standing with God. When the heart is not in the right standing. And as I said again, remember these words. God want to live his life through you. It's not your life. Paul gets a revelation of this. And God is showing me this. He said, unless I live my life through you, you miss it. That's why Paul would boldly declare in Galatians chapter 2, the life I live now is it is not I who live, but Christ living in me. Jesus, what Jesus was saying to uh, Philip in John chapter 8, it's not me living. It's God living in me. So may you be blessed. May you be blessed. <laughs> that you say the life I live is just not that I live. God want to live in you and through you. That's what God is all about. I want to live through you. Will you submit now? Will you surrender yourself, your body, your will, your emotion, everything? I say God live through me. God want to live his life through us. Glory to God. And that's just where it's happening. So may God bless you on Facebook and those are, I pray that you share the message and others who are around the world who are listening to Light of Revelation. This is Bishop Anderson say peace out. God love you. Take good care of yourself. Walk with the Spirit. Walk with God. Go with God. Live with God in Jesus name. Amen.